Hello, I'm Dr. Mitchell Grayson, an associate professor at the Medical College of Wisconsin in the Department of Pediatrics, Section of Allergy and Immunology, a fellow of the American Academy of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology, and a board-certified allergist. I'd like to speak to you today about asthma and anaphylaxis action plans. Action plans are written guidelines that help patients take a more active role in the treatment of their diseases, as well as helping parents manage their children's allergic diseases. The asthma action plan is normally divided into three sections and color-coded like a traffic stoplight. There is the green section for when you have no symptoms and your asthma is not interfering with your daily activities. This section will contain a list of medicines you take every day for the control of your asthma, your controller medications. The yellow zone outlines the medication regimen you should take when you are having symptoms of asthma such as coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, or having asthma symptoms with your daily activities. This section usually includes treatment with a reliever medication and may include additional controller medications. Patients are usually instructed to call their care provider if they are in the yellow zone for more than 24 hours. The red zone is treatment needed for symptoms that do not respond to the yellow zone treatment or are extremely severe, such as not being able to speak or walk due to an asthma attack. This section usually instructs the patient to take higher doses of the quick reliever medications and to obtain immediate medical attention, such as calling for an ambulance or going to the nearest emergency department. Some patients have peak flow meters, which are handheld devices that can objectively measure how well air is coming out of the lungs. If you have a peak flow meter, then these values will be added to your asthma action plan, and it allows you to measure a peak flow and determine the correct course of action, even in the absence of any symptoms. The anaphylaxis action plan outlines the steps to take in the case of an anaphylaxis, much like the asthma action plan outlines care for an asthma attack. As you can see, anaphylaxis plans do not contain the green, yellow, red designation of the asthma action plans. Normally, these plans contain a listing of possible symptoms of anaphylaxis, such as mouth itching, hives on the skin, cramps, diarrhea, wheezing, or dizziness. They then list the medications that should be given, which is usually self-injectable epinephrine. Sometimes, other medications may be listed, such as short-acting asthma relievers or antihistamines. The anaphylaxis action plan will also list whom to call when there is a reaction. This is almost always 911, followed by emergency contacts and the provider. So why would you want an action plan? Well, these documents take the guesswork out of trying to treat your disease and what to do when there is an asthma attack or anaphylaxis. These are times when people are not necessarily thinking clearly and having a detailed plan of attack is always very helpful. Action plans can be shared with other care providers as well as being given to schools and daycares. This allows for other people to provide the treatment when the patient is unable to help with their care. So, if you have asthma or anaphylaxis, be sure to request an action plan if you don't have one already. And if you haven't seen an allergist, I would encourage you to do so. Allergists treat all severities of asthma as well as anaphylaxis every day. They know the importance of an action plan and they will help you gain control over your asthma and allergies.